Hey, welcome back to the show. Today is July 25th, 2017. Sorry for not having news for a few weeks, but I've been pretty busy, but I'll get back to it right now. So we're going to start with the bad news. Um, a few weeks back, New 55 canceled the Kickstarter. The rules on Kickstarter state that you have to be um, sure that you can pretty much ship whatever you're selling. And New 55, as you know, had a problem with the pods uh, that they um, 20 by 24 was providing for them. And they had to cancel their Kickstarter when they were going already for a third of their funding. Um, if you go to the Facebook, I left the link below and also I left the link for the Kickstarter. You can read that they might not be able to make New 55 uh, 4x5 PN any longer. So if you want to shoot this instant film that's peel apart, it's the last one made at least to this date. Um, you pretty much want to check it out. In each picture, there's usually a comment or two from either Bob Crowley, the funder of the um, um, project, or New 55 as a company, or people asking, you know, what's going to happen when it's not so far. doesn't look good. I recommend you guys support, if you can, whatever is left over. They do still have the Atomic um, X film. They have the Monobath, and they have the Quick um, or the Ready Load, Quick Load um, one-shot film which is normal film um, packed into the sleeve so you can take it into the field and shoot without dust. So yeah, bad news there. Also on the bad news, uh, Nikon has confirmed that their FM10 is discontinued. That's the film body that's still for sale. It's usually a student camera sold for high schools and programs like that. But Nikon still has in their catalog the F6, even though we don't know it's currently being made or they have some stock that they're selling. On the better news, we have Kodak Alaris that we know is the company that came out, branched out of Kodak when they had their bankruptcy. And uh, they basically completes financial restructuring. It's an article stating that they've managed to refinance their debt with the bank, that they sold some land in the UK and some other things that are important for Kodak Alaris to keep on um, distributing film. As we all know, Kodak Alaris doesn't make the film, it's Kodak in Rochester that makes it, but then Kodak Alaris takes care of um, selling it wherever they want, distributing it, and probably pricing. Also, I found an article on the Alpa website talking about the uh, Alpa cameras. If you guys don't know, Alpa makes um, high-end digital and film cameras, and yeah, medium format film cameras, which a lot of people think are pretty much dead nowadays. You've got Alpa making them. So they combine either digital backs or film backs with their, I think it's the SW8 or SW12. You can check it on their um, website. They have a nice um, little pictures of someone shooting film in the middle of the snow. And they have always been supporting both film and digital backs. A while back, they came out with a special edition for their anniversary and it came with a film back and some Acros AM120 film, which was really nice to see a special edition that wouldn't become obsolete whenever batteries or sensors would corrode. So that's nice to see. Something I found online is that you can make your camera obscura at home. This is not really film photography or digital photography, but as we all know, uh, photography started by someone projecting light through a little hole and seeing the result on the other side. So this is basically the same concept, for, but for your house. What you do is you cover a window, you make a little hole, and you put this little lens, and I say lens because it's kind of a lens, and you can see the outside inside your house. Of course, it's upside down and left is right. As we all know, um, light travels straight, so then you would get, you know, up and down and down and up and left and right all combined. But it's really interesting to show the concept of photography and how it started. Also, the price is pretty cheap. I think it's $27 for the thing. You could also make a pinhole on your window and have the same effect. Online, we found this uh, current week uh, underwater 8x10 camera. So far, they say is the only 8x10 camera that's successfully taken a picture underwater. It's a special cover made out of, you know, uh, I think it's plexiglass and aluminum. And it just um, carries a film holder inside. So you got one shot every time. It's designed around a Nikon 150 SW, which is extremely wide, but in the water, as we all know, the angle of the lens will change. And um, yeah, if you want to get it, it's online. I think it's $5,800. It includes the lens, which is around $1,500 for that lens. 
So you're gonna pay roughly around three point something um, for, no, four point something for the camera itself, but you can shoot underwater eight by 10 photography. Nikon has been celebrating their 100 years and they've come out with some posters that they sell on their online store. The th funny thing is all the posters except for one are all about film cameras, which I guess um, mark like really historic moments for Nikon. But these posters, you got to buy them from them. They're 150 bucks depending on the finishes and framing and whatnot. It would have been nice to have free downloads for people to use them as, you know, desktop backgrounds or phone uh, screens or anything like that. Maybe even print them and put them in your darkroom. So yeah, if you want to buy them, you got to go through Nikon. There's no downloads. But do remember that Ilford, for example, had some free downloads of Ilford posters talking about, you know, um, kind of like old fashioned posters of HP5 and the different films and different stuff. So if you don't want to buy a poster, but you still want something film related and to put on your wall, check the Ilford. Um, I'll see if I can find the link and put it below. Also on the Kickstarter news, we've had the Sitograph um, lens, which is basically, uh, I think a 35 lens that's fixed at F8 and fixed focus. So basically you're just using hyperfocal. They kind of explain it in this um, very fashionable way to sell you a lens, you know, 35 F8. I think the price is around $300 to $500 for a lens. They're small, they come in colors, they look like phone colors. And um, honestly, if you want to shoot at F8 all the time and fix focus, just buy a cheap lens, glue it or gaffer tape it at whatever distance hyperfocal you need and stop it down to F8. I guess they never heard the whole saying of, be, you know, F8 and be there. But just in case you fancy a new lens, they're going to put it in Sony, Leica, uh, Nikon, and so all these mounts. Also, remember I announced that Zorky Photo was coming out with a film. Um, supposedly, uh, Zorky is registered in Russia, so he's changed his whole website and film to Cosmophoto.com. And now it's uh, Cosmo Photo Film. So it's an ISO 100 film rebranded from someone else, as he stated. We still don't know what film it could be. Once we have developing times and so forth, um, we'll probably know what kind of film it is. But if you want to check it out, Zorky Photo is not Zorky Photo anymore. It's Cosmo Photo now. Also from a new film, Lucky from China, we announced that uh, Lucky 100 Speed film was coming in 135 in sheets. Now they're announcing that they're coming with Lucky 400. So far, all I know it's coming in 135. And you can follow their Instagram. That's about all the news we get from them. Um, all the way from China. On the Kickstarter updates, I found that Intrepid is updating with their 8x10 camera. You can check the pictures, they're, uh, you know, ground, um, grinding ground glass, they're cutting cameras, varnishing, and so on. And also, um, if you want to check it out, I'll leave the link below. It's open to non-backers, which is nice, because I wasn't a backer, because I already own an 8x10, and um, you can check it out. Also, Labbox, which was a very successful Kickstarter for um, daylight uh, processing tank, has given updates about all the little bits and pieces they're putting together and how hard it is to make it perfect. So they're going to probably postpone their um, delivery, delivery time, but still not too far away. They're working slowly. Progress is going well. You got pictures and details on the link below. Well, that's all for this week. Thanks for watching. As always, if you have any tips or information you want to give me, send me an email to the email below. Thanks for watching. See you next week.